What's up, navigation traders? Today is Friday, September 7th. Welcome to this week's video update. Before we jump into the alerts, just wanted to give you a quick reminder that the new course is in your members area. So if you are listening to this, you are a pro member. And it's right down here. It's called How to Trade the VIX with 92.3% Accuracy. Just drop that down and you can start going through the course. It the the strategy is is really very simple. I mean, it's a it's a short call vertical strategy, which you're probably already familiar with, but in this case it's structured a little bit differently. The VIX and VIX related symbols are different animals. Uh, and so you you there's some a lot of nuances, which is why we war it warranted its own course by itself. So the uh, the returns. I mean, we've been trading this strategy for a long time. I never really utilized it in the alerts. I've actually sent it out a few times. It's been a while, uh, but I want to, and I trade it in our other accounts. But when before sending it out for for you guys, I want to make sure that you really understand the methodology and mindset behind it and you have all the training and that's what you have now. So you'll be seeing more of these throughout sprinkled into the alerts uh, as we go forward and as the opportunities come. But uh, if you haven't already, jump in there and we would love to hear your feedback. Uh, any input or feedback, let us know. We can always improve the courses. We're always going back and updating videos and and different things. So any any feedback or questions, let us know, and we want to make sure it's the best it can possibly be. All right, let's jump into the alerts. Had a short week this week. Monday was Labor Day, so starting on Tuesday the 4th was when we made our first trade, and that was a closing adjusting trade in EWW. So we had an adjusted short strangle, and uh, we ended up booking a nice profit on that piece of the trade after the roll, still holding our other short strangle in October. So let's take a look at EWW. You can see the IV percentile still nice and high at 72. Uh, and so let's go to the Analyze tab. Here's the other piece that we still have on. Uh, you can see prices hanging out right down here in the kind of lower lower portion of our range, but still well within range. Nothing to do here except for wait. If we get a little bit of upside and some more theta decay, we'll be able to book that winner. Um, if, if we do continue a little bit lower, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to potentially add another piece to this, another centered strangle around where price is with implied volatility. As high as it is, uh, makes sense to to continue to uh, sell premium in there. So we'll see what happens, uh, but look for that potentially next week. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in EEM. So kind of a similar situation. We had two pieces to this trade on. We closed out our adjusted strangle in EEM and we're still holding our other piece. So if we go to the analyze tab here, price is in a very similar situation. It's kind of in the lower portion of that graph, uh, but uh, just kind of in a wait and see period with that one. Wait for some more time to pass. Next trade was an opening trade. We sold a strangle in gold forward slash GC. Uh, and I've been getting a lot of questions about this. Of you know, if I have an IRA, I can't I can't trade the options on futures. What should I do? Well, a couple things. One, um, you could uh, a Tastyworks is working on the possibility of trading options on futures in an IRA. So that I think is coming. They're working on it. They they ha they haven't provided confirmation that they they will get that done, but. They got short calls in an IRA done, so if anybody can do it, they can. Uh, so hopefully that becomes uh, a capability in the in the near future. But un until then, you know, I, I I try to give an alternate trade if there's one available. You know, in the case of gold, GLD is a great trading vehicle, so you could trade a short strangle or an iron condor on GLD. You know, for trading something like the Nat Gas futures, and you have an IRA. I mean that's something you just you just can't put on because UNG is the corresponding ETF. It's such a low priced symbol. It's just not really tradable. Uh, so there's really nothing you could do. The other thing I would suggest is, and this goes for if you have a smaller account and you're not putting on all the alerts. Um, and, and and what I would suggest is 
have a paper trading account. So even if you're not putting on the trade for real in your real money account, put it on in the paper money account. The whole goal of these alerts are to help you see what we're doing, see how we enter, exit, adjust trades, roll roll trades, and so forth. It's not so you can mimic our exact portfolio. I mean, that's just that's just not going to happen. Um, you, everybody has different account sizes. Everybody has different risk tolerances. So that's not the goal. The goal is for you to watch what we're doing and learn how to trade. You know, obviously everyone's heard the saying: you teach a man to fish. Uh, excuse me, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you guys become traders on your own. And, and so take that into account when you're, when you're, uh, looking at some of these alerts that you may not be able to put on. So, uh, that one we just put on. So it's still fairly centered. Uh, got a tiny bit of profit, but not enough to take off yet. Uh, dead center in the middle of the graph. So just waiting on that one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So this is one that we've been working on for uh, two or three cycles now. Uh, put a butterfly on there. And in this case, uh, one of our butterflies, we closed out our put, put butterfly side and booked around 35% of profit on that piece of the trade. We still have this other adjusted butterfly. And so uh, you can see prices right here. And, and so this is, this is really at a point where, you know, we don't want it to go back up in price because that, because you can see our profit sloping down at that point. If it goes up, we're going to make a tiny bit more money or, or be about where we're at right now. So what I'm looking to do is, uh, I'm looking to take this off, uh, probably sometime early next week. Um, and, and the reason is, is because a, we already put this one on. In October, we did this today, and so it's an alert that I hadn't gotten to yet, but we also have this uh, October butterfly that we just put on today. So it it's very similar to rolling. We're just doing it in a couple different stages. We put this one on first, and then we'll just take this one off probably early next week. Hopefully, if it continues a little bit lower, we'll squeak out a couple more dollars. Uh, even if it starts to go up, though, I think we'll, we'll look at taking this off early next week. So look for that. Next trade was an opening trade in IYR. So the real estate ETF IV percentile popped back up above that 50 level. It was at 64 when we put this on. And so we, we sold an iron condor. Now, due to where the premium was and the strikes and that kind of stuff, we did a little bit tighter of an iron condor. And so if we look at, take a look at IYR, you can see the, the, the strikes that we sold, the short strikes, were at the 81 and 83, so just two points wide on that uh, from that standpoint. And that does a couple things for us. A, it does lower our probability of profit, so the, the probability of us making money on the trade is a little bit lower, but it increases our max profit. It gives us more credit uh, for what we sold it for. So uh, when we do something a lot tighter, whether it's a straddle or a really tight strangle or a tight iron condor or a butterfly, we're not going to we're not going to wait for 50 percent of max profit. In this case, we're going to take this off when it gets to 20, 25, 30 percent of max profit. Uh, we're, so we're going to take those profits earlier um, uh, because of because of the lower probability situation. So that's what we've got in IYR. And if we take a look at the chart, you can see that um, uh Implied volatility is still up, up there above 50 at the 58 level. So uh, looking for price just to kind of continue to bounce around in this range. And hopefully we, we book a profit in that one. Next trade was an opening trade in VXX. So I went ahead and sent out an alert uh, very similar to the way that we teach the strategy in the course. And, and the reason is, is we got an IV percentile pop up to 78 uh, when the market, being that it was going down this week, uh, that increased implied volatility. And with VXX being a VIX-related ETF, uh, we put on a short call vertical in VXX. I go over this in detail in the course, so I don't want to spend a bunch of time uh, on it now. But remember, I mean, if you look at a long-term chart of VXX, this is going back to 2012. I mean, look at this thing it just continues to go down. 
and that has to do with the the fact that it's based on uh, VIX futures and the futures continually roll. So it has that contango and backwardation effect. Uh, so it's got the, uh, it's got that downward drag to it. And so that's one of the reasons that we like to to sell these short call verticals on VXX. Uh, you can see it's popped up in price now and we're just waiting for it to contract to benefit this trade. Uh, so you can see what it looks like here. And uh, we're looking at, you know, we've got about a 63% probability of success. And we're looking for some uh, downside in this. Now, remember, the VXX is inversely correlated to SPX or the S&P 500. So if stocks go up, volatility is typically going to contract and go down. So this is actually a when we beta weight this position to the SPY, this is actually a long delta position. So if the market goes up, this trade will benefit by going down. Uh, and, and conversely, if the market tanks, uh, this price of VXX is going to go up and, and cause a losing position for us. Now, one question I got from a member, and again, this is explained in the course in more detail, but they were like, well, look at the risk reward. Isn't this a problem? You know, we've got a max profit of 364, a max loss of 2436. Well, think about it, undefined risk. I mean, theoretically, you have unlimited risk if you're trading a strangle, right? Well, the reality is stocks don't go up forever and, you know, they, they very rarely go to zero, right? So that that's a theoretical. In the real life of trading, we, you know, unless we have just a, significant, abrupt market crash, we're never going to take full loss on this trade. And um, and so this is really a catastrophic loss. You almost want to think of this as a, a naked short call, a naked naked call position. And uh, we're just, but, but on volatility related products, we want, we always want to define our risk. Okay. And, and the reason is, is because this, th if, if, if things get crazy and, and the market were to tank, I mean, these things can just shoot through the roof. So we want to have that catastrophic pr protection in case something crazy like that does happen. But the reality is most of the time, uh, we're not even going to get close to that, even if we close it out for a loser. And we talk about this in the course. So make sure you go through that in detail. Uh, but typically, I mean, we're looking at over 90% probability of making money on this trade the way that we teach in the course. All right. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZW, which is wheat. So price had breached our downside break even of the October iron condor that we had on. So we closed out the untested side, which is the call vertical side. So if we take a look at the graph, uh, this is the put vertical side that we still have on. You can see price came down uh, breached our downside break even and is hanging out here outside of our range. So we could use some up movement in wheat to get back inside our range there. And then we've also got a November iron condor on, which is uh, this one here where you can see prices well within our range, uh, just looking for some more time to pass before we do anything on that piece. Um, by the way, going back to gold, one thing on that uh on that opening strangle. So in Thinkorswim, and and I didn't realize this, I've seen it a couple of times, but I, I failed to mention this in the trade alerts. And, and actually one of our members uh, pointed this out. So thank you for that. And that is uh, in, in toss, the options that we put, we put this on with 50 days to expiration. It's got 48 days to go now, but toss classifies this as the November options. Okay. Yeah, they actually expire towards the end of October. So in Tastyworks, they ask, they actually classify them as the October option, options. So just uh, what I'm going to do from now on in situations like that, I'm going to try to be more specific about how many days it has to expiration to help make sure you understand exactly which, uh, which contracts you're trading. Uh, because sometimes depending on the time frame and depending on where we're at in the cycle, uh, Tastyworks classifies them a little bit differently as far as October versus November. So in case anybody else had that question, I just wanted to point that out. And uh, 
Next trade was an opening trade in SMH. So this is one that we haven't traded in a while. In fact, it, it it's not on our standard short strangle watch list, but we're going to put it back on because uh, they've proven that they've they have uh, a lot of liquidity. The it used to be, I mean, even you know about a year ago, SMH was really get hard to get filled in. The bid ask spreads were wide. Uh, the liquidity just wasn't wasn't quite there. And so I, I, I took it off the watch list. I stopped trading it, but it's come back. And SMH is the semiconductor ETF. So if we look here at our analyze tab, we put on a short strangle. And um, and so you can see it's, it's still dead centered. And uh, so nothing to do here except for wait. If we take a look at the chart, uh, you can see it probably had volatility. IV percentile is still at the 62 level. So uh, when we get high implied volatility here, we're gonna we're gonna continue to uh, to trade SMH because it's a good price, you know, right at one hundred six dollars. So if we sell naked options, uh, it's the buying power is not crazy. And then if you wanted to find your risk, you still collect enough credit. So if you wanted to trade an iron condor here, you could buy the wings to define your risk, and uh, and it, it ends up being a good trading vehicle for both undefined and defined risk. Next trade was a closing trade in Baidu. So we had a short call vertical in Baidu that we put on to add some short delta in our portfolio. We ended up booking a profit over 50% of max on that one. So that was a nice trade. If we take a look at a chart of Baidu, get an idea of, of what price has done here. What you'll see is, obviously, uh, along with the rest of the market this week, we've had a nice nice down move in the stock there, which gave us the opportunity to book that winner. So good trade there. And then the last trade I already went over, which is the uh, opening uh, adjusting trade in FXI, where we added a butterfly in the October cycle. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions that we have, starting with the Euro, the uh, Euro Future 6E. You can see price is hanging out well within the range here. Got a little bit of profit. Could use a little up movement to get a little bit more profit in that before we book it. But uh, just playing the waiting game in the euro. In oil forward slash CL, we have this adjusted strangle that we rolled. Price has come down nicely this week. Uh, so we're up about 470 on this piece of the trade. Uh, once we once we close this out, uh, we're going to be a little bit more aggressive. We're not going to wait for a full you know, 20, you know, 30, 40, 50%. We'll probably book this when we get to maybe 25% of max profit, partly because we've already got, I mean, we're up, you know, several thousand dollars on this trade. So we want to go ahead and book that. If, if applied volatility stays high and we're getting close to, let me click on the continuous contract here. Uh, if we get close to the point where, um, you know, this gets down to 60 days. So in the next eight days, in the next week or so, uh, we may we may just close that one out and then re-enter a new position uh, going out 60 days. So oil has been a good trading vehicle for us, and the implied volatility has stayed uh, stayed up nicely for us. So right now it's about 58 on the percentile, so good time to be selling premium there. So we'll see what happens. Uh, of course, if, um, if price doesn't stay in our range and it, it goes and breaks out to one direction or the other, uh, we may just add an additional piece to this and continue uh, extending duration on this piece of the trade. But we'll just see what happens. Uh, those are just kind of hypotheticals of what we might do, uh, depending on where things are at the time. Uh, ES, S&P 500. So we've got a few different pieces on here. This is a short call vertical that was previously part of an iron condor. Spread that out so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm not sure what Toss is doing with these squiggly lines, but it uh, should be should be straight. Let me uncheck these. Check there we go. So price is right here. It's just outside of our range, so we need some downs, a little bit more downside to get back into our range there. And then same thing on this one. Uh, this is a short call vertical. This one is actually back in our range, and uh, once we get back to around about the 2850 mark, where we're we're back to the zero line break even on the P and L. Uh, we'll probably take this one off, which would equate to a profitable iron condor trade overall on that piece. Uh, we're still down on our 
ES Iron Condor overall. We've been adjusting and, and managing this one for several cycles, uh, but on that piece, we would book that and take a profit. On, uh, and then we've got one other piece to this, and that is a long put vertical. And you can see, you know, price had that strong move over the last couple weeks, and not this week, but the last couple weeks. And so price had moved significantly out of a range. It's come back pretty good this week, but we're just going to hold this for now, see if we can get a little bit more down movement back into range, or we will potentially look to roll this next week. Uh, we've got 14 days to expiration, so. Uh, really, especially once we get under seven days, we'll definitely be more aggressive about rolling that. But if it's our if it's moving our, in our direction, which would be down, then we may uh, give it a little bit more room and not not start rolling it next week. But all these September positions that have 14 days left next week, we will start to roll them. Uh, you know, we want to be rolled by expiration week, and, and we don't want to roll them all in one day. So we'll start to gradually roll any September positions that we have starting next week. I mentioned gold. I mentioned wheat, uh, Apple. So Apple, even with the market being weak this week, did have a actually had a couple down days, which is crazy. I didn't think Apple could go down, but uh, we've got this. We've got this long put vertical. You can see price is well out of our range. We're we we're almost at max loss. It was way out here. We've gained back a tiny bit, uh, but you know, with this, with as close as this is to a max loss, you know, there's no reason for us to do anything with this because there's no adjustments or anything that we can do to, to help save this. Uh, all we're going to do is we're just holding it until we get a little bit closer to expiration. If by chance Apple makes a significant move down and comes back into range. That would be awesome, but probably won't happen. But uh, we don't really gain anything from doing doing anything at this point, so we're just going to continue to hold that. DIA, the Dow ETF. We've got a couple of short call verticals that were previously part of Iron Condors. We have continued to roll those for uh, several cycles, and uh, to keep that short delta in our portfolio, you can see prices uh, a little bit out of our range. So looking for some downside to benefit those. EEM, I mentioned that one, EWW, EWZ. So this is uh, this is one where we've got two pieces to the trade. One is this adjusted strangle. Price is sitting right here, and we're up a little bit after the roll that we had done. And so we're just continuing to hold that to collect more theta. And then we've also got this other piece, which is a strangle that has not been adjusted. You can see price is dead centered here. Got a little bit of profit, but not enough to take off yet. Uh, EWZ has been interesting because this week it's actually gone up when the rest of the market's been going down. And so that's always good when you need an up move. The rest of the market's going down. We needed EWZ to go up, so that benefited us nicely. Uh, and the same with Johnson & Johnson. You know, the rest of the market was down, but J&J &J was up, and we had a bullish position on here. So you can see we're profitable on this one. Uh, I'd like to get a little bit more profit before we take this off. Um, so I'm hoping we get a little bit more upside going into next week. Uh, and if so, we'll probably book this one, um, but we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, one other one I skipped over, uh, IWM. So IWM, we've got two pieces on. We've got an iron condor. You can see here we need a little bit more down movement to uh to before we book that hopefully we get that early next week and we can go ahead and take that one off and then we've got our short call vertical which was previously part of an iron condor kind of in the same situation as the Qs and dia just looking for some downside to uh to benefit that piece iyr i mentioned that one did i uh yeah that's the the narrow iron condor j and j i just mentioned that one the Qs, i mentioned that one i think no i didn't so Qs are uh, uh, we've got a couple short call verticals that were previously part of an iron uh, part of iron condors, and you can see this is both of them together, but uh, they're only one strike difference. So you can see that we are in range here, just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. And again, keeping this on for short delta, um, and just to give you guys an idea of where we are, we're about we're at about right at about three to one of short delta to theta. So. We like to be in that one to one to five to one range, and we're at about three to one right now, so sitting really good as far as where we want to be. Uh, so we'll just continue to wait on that. 
SMH, I mentioned that one. That was the short strangle. VXX, I mentioned. And lastly, XLK. So uh, this is uh, this is very correlated to the Qs. Uh, and we've got some uh, short call verticals on here. You can see prices back in our range. We're up a tiny bit on this piece, uh, but just continuing to look for a little bit more downside before we do anything else in XLK. And that's in September. So uh, this may be one of the ones that we look to potentially roll um, early next week, but we'll see what happens where price and volatility and everything else in our in our overall portfolio deltas are. All that comes into play, and we will address that next week. So hope that was helpful. Everybody have a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.